Now, is there anyone that told you that you, you were crazy? Because when we think about special cool. forces yeah. and yes. what, what, how elite it is, it, it, you're telling someone, well, I'm going to go in the Army and I'm going to be special forces. And it's almost like saying, you know, I'm going to start my own religion or, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know. It's like, it's like it sounds crazy when someone's, because this is, you're ta- you guys are part of the best of the best. Did it sound crazy when you told people what you wanted to do? No, you got to understand, I, generationally, right? I came out of Barry Sadler's when the Ballad of the Green mm. Beret came more, out. More than, John more Wayne, than that, right? John Wayne, the Green Beret. Yeah. In, in your case. In my case, it's a family, and, and all of us. Yeah, that many guys, too. We are a family. Well, I, I'm, just, I'm just helping out just today. To, just tap the glass. So, Did anyone tell you you were crazy, though? No, they just ignored you. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of like okay. They they displayed it more than said it. So the, the average person doesn't know what to do with that. Like you know, I was let's see, late nineties, early two thousands. I remember even getting grilled by the social worker at our school. Like you have this odd interest in the military. Like what do you? And it came across about? as pity. I bet it, 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 they concerned. didn't understand. They didn't get it. It, it was concerned they because it was after. It. What's wrong? What's wrong with you? It was, it was after Columbine, so there was a, a concern. Why are you interested in this kind of stuff? And I, I remember actually telling my uh, high school guidance counselor, I want to join the Army, I want to be in special operations, and I want to be a sniper. And she was like, you should follow your dreams. So, so you, want, you, want to, you, want, you want to kill people. Is that what it is? And, and the funny thing is I did exactly that. Yeah, well, as you should. Yeah. But it's interesting that that generates. So, so, so Jim came from like right in the middle of uh, the uh, tail end of Vietnam. Tail end of Vietnam. And I was Vietnam. When you had to be out of your mind at that point, right? According to well, some yeah, I mean, like, social like, not, 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 that was post after that was all it, the post sixties BS. It was, less, so, it was right. less socially acceptable in Jim's era than in mine. I yeah, there was. What about people you? And in, 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 in 1988, when I when I when I enlisted right out of college, the, the military wasn't that, and it wasn't that. It was kind of a non-issue. It yeah, wasn't a big yeah. thing. Like the, it wasn't. We weren't at war. We'd kind of, you know, Reagan was at the end of his presidency. We were not involved in any but you direct had a co- conflict. You, you had a college degree, though. Yeah, I had a degree. It's, like, I, it's almost like you're telling someone that you're going to throw that can, away. Can I tell you a story? Oh, yeah, I had a lot Real of that. quick, I just yeah. want to jump in. When I went to basic training, it was before the voluntary army draft was still going. And I remember my first day, we lined up at Fort Campbell, Kentucky in January. It was very cold. And the drill sergeants at that time were all Vietnam era and Korean veterans that were wounded. Because they weren't in combat, they were training us. Uh, right, right, right. Right? Yeah. And so they said, How many of you guys have a college degree? Raise your hand. You guys raise your hand. How many of you guys, what, you know, went through the series, right? How many of you guys were construction foremen? About three guys. You're my platoon sergeants. <laughs> they, they, didn't go, they didn't go with a college degree. No, they, they asked me in basic training. I remember the company, I don't remember his name at all, but he, they actually called me in and said, Hey, we, have, we see you have a degree. Have you thought about OCS? I go, nope, not interested. Because I, I did enough homework to know that, no disrespect to officers, I just I wanted to be on the ground. And I know that the guys who do the, the officer stuff, as, as good as they are, and some are great, some suck, but like us. But they, I've been in for like 22 years now. I had a four-year break, but I've never not had a rucksack and a gun. And so like the, the officers, the problem with the, not problem, but it's a different career. They're on for a couple well, of years the, the on a team, and then they move up. Well, the, the way the system is constructed is yes. that they can only be in that team leader position in special forces for like two years, and then they're gone at the most. At the most, and then they're years. gone. They're yeah. off. They're off of the team. So the way we looked at it was, it was eighteen months. You know, you, you just check the fucking the friggin' block and keep on track. <laughs> say it. Send it, West. You can say it. <laughs> So, you know, we knew they were just passing through, right? Yeah. Right, yes, yes. They're, yes. they're tourists on the team at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. You know, they go to Rangers School, get the tab. They never spend a day in the, on an operation with them, right? Then they come to Special Force School, get the tab, just punch the ticket. But once they get the major and lieutenant colonel level, not all of them, most of them, what they get promoted on is how much money they save by screwing the troops. Yeah, uh, That's for me yeah, and you, okay. Yeah, no, I get it. And there's, I, I was lucky. I've always had good team leaders. Like I even had a great not team leaders. I got great team leaders. Right. Yeah. It's when they get after that. I actually had a There's my a my platoon leader in the eighty second uh, in the Gulf War. I can say his name, Jeff Martindale. He was a really good guy. He was he went to Ranger Battalion after the Gulf War. Fast forward, I get out. I'm in I'm in group for a bunch of years. I get out. Gulf. I mean the the, the war kicks off. I'm back in. I'm in Kosovo. 
at a at a safe house out there, and there's a General Holland who was head of SOCOM was coming in, and they're like his aide. I, we got to call. He was house. a lieutenant colonel in Desert Storm. But check this out. Right, no, no, check this out. He, this he, he's on my uh, Holland. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. There, well, he was there. I, I, he he came to our safe house, but before they came, one of the guys called <laughs> us and said, "Hey, Terry, uh, his aide says he knows you." I was like, "Oh man, what does that mean?" So these guys get on the ground. They have like a P. They have a you know a, 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 a security detail. It's Jeff Martindale, who was my platoon leader in the 82nd, was his wow. aide. I, as soon as I see him, I go, you, mu-, and instead of like, you know, you mf I didn't, I didn't say, hey, sir. I was like, I punched him and we're like. Uh, so you were talking you never know. about burning bridges, right? <laughs> you never, <you> never <laughs> burned that bridge, right? I never, no, I never burned that bridge. And he was a great, so I've, I've, I've had the, I've been lucky to work with great officers. Yeah, and yeah. my team leader now, he's a, one of my best friends. So it's worked out for me. Yeah.